Good morning, everyone. This is Edward Talisi for Chelsea Global Advisors and the CQF Institute. It's 6th of March, 2015. Two quick things to talk about today. Firstly, if you could recall, um, we have been um, fairly negative on the financial sector for at least the last six months in our underweight position in um, financials, U.S. and European financials in particular, has been rewarded since financials have um, underperformed the broader market by a fairly significant amount for the last six months or so. However, I think it's, it's, it's time to change from an underweight position to at least a, a neutral position on financials, uh, particularly in Europe and in the U.S., and here's why. Yesterday on the 5th of March, U.S and um, foreign banking organizations, or FBOs, released results of the Dodd-Frank asset stress tests. And this is the first time since these tests have been um, in place that all 31 institutions taking the tests were given a passing grade by the Federal Reserve. Now, I, I think it's important for people to understand what the difference is between the Dodd-Frank asset stress tests and the CCAR tests, which the results come out. Um, in another week or so, and, and the CCAR tests are probably a little more important than the Dodd-Frank asset stress test. Nonetheless, it's an important milestone for financials um, that all 31 institutions have um, passed this test, and I think from now um, till the end of 2015, financials probably can catch up with the broader market. Um, the key difference um, for those that are interested between the Dodd-Frank asset stress test and the CCAR tests, which are going to come out in a week or so, is that firstly, um, the Dodd-Frank asset stress tests do not take into account the capital plans of the banking organization subject to the test. That means that their dividend plans or share repurchase plans are not included in the assumptions. It's, it's just sort of a stress test scenario. Whereas the CCAR tests, which again are slightly more important, um, take into account the capital plans of the bank. So if these 31 banks now um, pass the CCAR test, that means that the Fed has sort of blessed the, the dividend plans and the share repurchase plans of, of these banks. So it's something clearly to keep an eye on. And again, those results are going to happen in, in about a week or so. The, the key bank to look at are, the key banks, excuse me, to look at are Citibank and Bank of America that have really um, struggled with these tests in the past. The second difference between DFAST and, and the CCAR test is that in the CCAR test, the Fed also evaluates the qualitative aspects of the stress testing procedure. And if people can recall, that's the part where some of the banks have fallen down recently. So that's something to keep our eye on. Second point I wanted to talk about is um, in the bond markets between the U.S. and Europe. As you know, I've been fairly constructive on the long end of the U.S. bond markets, um, simply from a relative value perspective that it offers value in relation to the bond markets in Europe and Asia. For the last couple of months, I've been wrong on that, um, on, on that prediction. However, I think it's important to note right now is as of today, the spread between German bonds which are yielding in the 10-year sector around 30, 40 basis points. Um, and U.S. Treasuries, which are around 210, 212, is the largest spread that we've seen in over um, 15 years. 15 years is a very, very long time in investment life cycle. So I do think it, it's worth investors sticking with this trade to stick with U.S. Treasuries on a relative value basis versus Japanese JGBs or German bonds. That's it for now. Any questions, Edward Talisi, Chelsea Global Advisors, 347-939-9488. Please check out the CQF Institute website and my own website at chelseagloboladvisors.com.